Have you ever wondered what's the deal about covered calls? I mean, some might say that it's the best strategy to earn money on stocks that you already own. But some might even go as far as to say that you can't lose on covered calls. But is that true? If not, what are the risks associated with selling covered calls? Hi everyone, my name is Rick Orford, author of The Financially Independent Millennial, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you haven't seen my content before, well, I create written, uh, written content and videos about generating additional income through stocks and options trading. I'm a Wall Street Journal best-selling author, and I've been trading stocks and options for over 20 years. Oh, well, actually, it's like 25 years since 1999. My work is regularly featured in NASDAQ, Yahoo Finance, and Business Insider, so if they can trust me, so can you. But full disclaimer, I am not a licensed financial or investment advisor, so everything discussed in this video is going to be purely for information and entertainment purposes only. And of course, if you watch to the end, you will learn everything that I know about the risks of selling covered calls. And believe me, I've got a, quite a few interesting points to discuss, which you will only find right here in this video, so stick around. And of course, if you happen to learn something new, I invite you to like and subscribe, but only after you've picked up something useful. And of course, you'll be notified about future videos in this series. Okay, so I've talked about covered calls on this channel many times before, and you can check out this video up here for a basic version of it. It's one of my favorite option strategies, and you may have seen it before, but in this video, I'm going to cover quite a bit. You're going to get a refresher on what covered calls are. You're going to learn about assignment, being aware of, of opportunity loss, what to do um, when your stocks get called away, and the tax implications. And most importantly, I'm going to give you some bonus tips to reduce the risks of selling covered calls. And if that's not enough, by the end of the video, um, if you feel that the risks of selling covered calls isn't for you, I even have a plan B that will allow you to invest in covered calls without ever selling one. All right, so let's jump right on into it. Okay, so let's do a refresher on covered calls. In case you're new to selling covered calls, a call option offers the holder the right to buy 100 shares of an underlying asset at a specified strike price within or at a specified expiration date. A covered call is an option strategy that uses an existing stock position preferably stocks you already own and want to keep for the long term, to sell or write call options. The strategy aims to earn a premium from the stock option, and your goal for the call option is to expire out of the money, or OTM. That means the underlying stock price stays below the strike price. Let's say you own 100 shares of NVIDIA that you bought for $700 apiece. Today, NVDA stock trades for $860 a share, so your position already has a nice $16,000 profit. But say you don't want to sell just yet because you think NVIDIA is going to go up to at least $880. Well, maybe in this case you sell a covered call. Let's say you select the $880 strike price and you collect a minimum of $27.80 in premium or $2,780 for the contract that expires in a month from now. By the way, these are real-time numbers that I took when I recorded this video. So when you're watching, it may differ from current prices. Anyway, let's plot that out on a chart. As you can see, we've got the strike price and profit and loss zones. So if NVIDIA's price stays below $880 until expiration, you get to keep $2,780, or $27.80 times 100. Now if NVIDIA drops further than that, well, you'll register a paper loss, but you still get to keep your $27.80 a share. 
As you can see, selling covered calls is a simple and elegant way to boost your profitability on stocks that you already own because you're collecting a premium. By the way, if you like what I'm saying so far, give me a like on this video. And don't forget, I'd like to keep the community alive, so don't hesitate to leave a question or a comment in the comments below. Okay, so back to the topic. Remember, your goal for an op as an option seller is for the option to expire worthless. If your covered call expires worthless, you can write another call and earn another premium for however long you want until your option gets assigned. Now, assignment happens when the underlying stock price ends above the call option strike price and the buyer chooses to exercise their right to buy the stock. The process is random and is overseen by what's called the Options Clearing Corporation, that's the OCC. But even here, the numbers work in favor of you, right? The options writer, because on average, only 7% of call options are ever assigned before expiration. And like FINRA says, assignment is a somewhat predictable event. I mean, if the stock goes above the strike price, you'll likely be assigned. So if it approaches, I'd consider what I call some risk management, like closing out the trade. So if your option does get it assigned, what does it mean for your stock positions? Well, it's simple. You sold them and you collected a hundred times the strike price per contract. Assignment means you must sell a hundred shares for every call option you wrote, and it's an entirely automated process. Let's take our previous example with NVIDIA. Suppose NVIDIA's stock um, goes to $900 at expiration and your covered call gets assigned. Well, that means you're going to sell your shares for $880 a piece, which is fine, considering that was your target selling price anyway, and it was the strike price. And with a $700 purchase price, you're still going to walk away with $180 of profits plus $27.80 in premium per share. That's $20,780 gross profit per contract, $780 more than you would have earned if you had sold your NVIDIA shares at $900. Remember, since your call option profits are multiplied by 100 for every option you write, in this case, you'd get an extra $780. And you don't just pick up $780 off the street every day, right? So that's not bad. But what happens if NVIDIA's price goes even higher? I mean, it's not impossible. We've already seen this stock jump more than $260 in the space of a month. And this is where we come to the most talked about risk of covered calls, and that's opportunity loss. By writing covered calls, you limit the maximum profit for your stock position in exchange for an upfront premium payment. Now, this shouldn't be a problem when the underlying stock price moves a few cents or a few dollars above the strike price and gets assigned. Um, the premium you receive often more than makes up for that. However, in the case of a significant price ups upswing, such as $100, well, you're going to miss out on a lot of potential profit. And this is what we mean by opportunity loss. So let's go back to the previous example. You purchased NVIDIA shares at $700, wrote a short call with an $880 strike at $27.80 per share premium, and maximum profit is capped at $207.80 a share. Now, if NVIDIA's price, let's say, goes to $1,200 at expiration, well, that's $320 per share of opportunity loss for you. Now, it might seem like an extreme example, but again, it's happened before. As I mentioned, 
Covered calls are typically written against stock positions that you already hold. So using the strategy with long-term stocks that are already in your portfolio could make sense to collect some additional income. After all, you get to earn premiums while holding on to your positions and waiting for them to sell at a higher price in the future, right? So what's not to love about it? However, the risk of assignment means the risk of you losing that stock position. And this is particularly painful if it's a company that you intend to hold for five to 10 years or more. Of course, losing the stocks also means you lose any potential additional benefits like dividends, right? And my average holding is about 10 years and believe me, losing a stock position that I wanted to keep until retirement just because my call was assigned would be very disappointed. And it's even worse when you get to watch it increase its value and collect dividends. So there you have it. These are the two most common risks of selling covered calls. But some of you might say, look, Rick, these two covered calls have been discussed to death by so many other people. Is there not anything new to add? Well, there is. Having sold covered calls, I'm well acquainted with this one risk and not many experts consider it when using the strategy, and that's tax implications. Growing up, my parents always said there's two things that are guaranteed in life, death and taxes. Though I'd say let's add a third. No investment is risk is risk free. Let's talk about the last two. Your investment earnings are subject to taxes. This is basic, right? In some countries, taxes are built into the transaction fees and your broker handles the payment and filing. However, in the States, things are different. Earnings from stocks and options can either be subject to long-term capital gains tax or short-term capital gains tax. And the difference is simple. Long-term capital gains result from taking profit from assets that you've owned for over a year. On the other hand, these profits are considered short-term capital gains if you've owned them for less than a year. So considering our previous NVIDIA trade example, any assignment in the short term would fall as a short-term capital gain since you only bought the stock within the last year. To be clear, both the $180 for the stock gains and $27.80 for the premium, of course per share, excluding fees, would be subject to short-term capital gains. And short-term capital gains are considered regular income tax. But remember, I'm not an accountant, so for any additional questions about tax, definitely check with an accountant. Now. Long-term capital gains, well, it's a bit more forgiving and straightforward. De depending on the taxable amount, uh, long-term capital gains could either be 0, 15, or 20%. Now, taxes are an important investment consideration and one of the most underrated risks for the covered call strategy. And the difference between a 20% long-term capital gain tax and a 37% short-term capital gain could mean hundreds if not thousands of dollars that are out of your earnings. And that's why, to me, taxes are one of the biggest risks of, of selling covered calls and why I always recommend you to check with an accountant. And of course, if you don't live in the United States, you can check with your country's internal revenue website for more information. Next up, we're going to talk about how to mitigate the risks of selling covered calls, like how to minimize them and what you can do instead. Okay, so, so far in this video, we've covered the most crucial risks for selling covered calls. Uh, the question now is, well, what do you do about these risks? Well, I have a few good suggestions that I use to mitigate these risks. So let's say, for example, you have stocks that you want to use to sell covered calls on. Maybe you've already checked your portfolio. But what if you want to minimize that risk of getting them assigned or called away? Well, there's a good solution for that, and that's looking at the delta. 
Delta is an option Greek that indicates the relationship of the options premium to the price of the underlying security. Delta is expressed as minus 1 to plus 1, or minus 100 to plus 100, but don't get confused. If an options delta, let's say, is 0 0.50, the expected premium is expected to increase by 50 cents every time the stock price moves up by $1. And the higher the delta, the higher the premiums, especially because the stock price is going up, right? Easy. But how do you mitigate the risks of selling covered calls using Delta? Well, Delta can also be used to tell you the probability of the option expiring in the money. And by what I mean by in the money, I mean even a one cent over the strike price is considered ITM or in the money. And we need to reverse the relationship since we're selling covered calls. So we want them to expire out of the money. So now the delta of a call um, is inversely proportional to the probability of expiring worthless. So let's put it a different way. Take a look at this graph. Think of the delta as the chances you'll be assigned. So a 0 0.7 or a 70 delta on a covered call means there's a 70% chance you'll be assigned. And a 20 delta means there's a 20% chance you'll be assigned or an 80% chance that it won't. Now for covered calls on stocks that I own and I want to keep for the long term, well, I'm going to be conservative. So that means we're going to be talking deltas of around 20. That way my risks of getting assigned are low enough so I don't really have to worry about all of those risks. And at the same time, they aren't so low that I'm not getting much in premium. But what happens if the stock price gets a little too close to the strike, right? Well, you can adjust the trade by rolling it. Another way to mitigate the risks of selling covered calls is by rolling the trade's expiration date or the strike price. Now, let's be clear. You're going to be paying to close out the trade. But if you sell another covered call with a later expiration or a higher strike price or both, you'll get a premium which will offset closing the original trade. To roll your call option, you're going to enter what we call a buy to close order to close out your covered call, and then you'll write another call with either a different strike price or a different expiration date depending on your preference. And of course, to do that, you're going to open or you're going to use what's called a sell to open order. By rolling your expiration date forward, you give your trade more time to play out the way you want and give you a chance to keep your shares. And the same goes for rolling strike prices. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that covered calls are typically used for stocks that you've held or intend to hold for the long term, but it doesn't always need to be true. In fact, you can buy stocks specifically to use and sell a covered call on. And with this strategy, you can earn through premiums and capital appreciation when your option gets assigned. And to do this, you're gonna write an at the money a call option and buy the stock at the same time. But finding the right ones to do this can be a challenge, right? No one has the time to go through all of the options in the market uh, and all of the stocks and to find the best ones, right? So what do you do? Well, you can use an option scanner. These nifty sites, well, they're platforms to allow you to screen through the options market to find ones that fit your specific requirements. And it's really as easy as they sound, right? Uh, let me show you an example. My preferred option scanner is Option Samurai. So if I want to look for covered calls, I'll go to their website, log in, and click Compose New Scan. Then you can select the strategy you want to use, and of course, covered call is the default. It's the most common strategy. So we already likely have some candidates in there with the default value. Now that we have a nice little filter here that says the probability of expiring worthless. Again, this is inversely proportional to delta. So uh, we want to look for 30 delta covered calls. So in this case, the probability of expiring worthless, well, we're going to set that to 70. 
The great thing about Option Samurai is that it doesn't leave much room for ambiguity, right? Uh, you have every possible metric you want laid out, which is excellent for experienced traders as well as the beginners, and all the trades or all of the steps for the trades are indicated. So it's good for anyone. In any case, let's do a quick scenario for writing an at the money covered call. And we're using NVIDIA again. NVIDIA is trading at $860.01. And let's say we buy it for that price and sell an $860 strike that expires next month. And today, you could sell that option for $46.70. So these are the possible scenarios that can play out with this trade. Like usual, whatever happens, you get to keep the $46.70 a share in premium. Now, you might get paper losses on your stock position, but as long as NVDA's stock price stays above $813.30, you won't get to see any losses on the whole trade. Now, you may have also heard people suggesting implementing the stock repair strategy. A stock repair strategy uses what's called a call ratio spread. It's a more complex strategy and honestly, a lot more complicated than I'd like. And in my opinion, if you need to repair your trade this way, I think the best way is just to close out the trade and move on. Maybe roll it to a further expiration or a different strike price. Because trading shouldn't be complicated, and the more complicated it is, the more chances you'll have to make mistakes. Now, last but not least, if the risks of selling covered calls isn't worth it for you. You know, you've watched this video, let's say the risks is not there. What if I told you there was a way that you can invest in sell selling covered calls without ever actually even selling one? Well, this strategy allows you to do exactly that. And it doesn't even require your account to allow you to sell covered calls. You can do it with any basic account. And that involves investing in a fund that sells covered calls as its own strategy. To gain exposure to covered calls without actually selling them, well, you can look to a fund. For example, JP Morgan has a premium income ETF and the ticker is JEPI, J-E-P-I. This ETF invests in a basket of stocks and sells covered calls. And it's got a perfect Morningstar rating and its dividend yield today is about 7%. Not only that, it's actually more stable than the S&P 500. For example, in 2022, peak to trough, the S&P 500 was down about 25%, but JEPI was only down by about half and continued to pay very well. Another fund you might look at, it's a newcomer. It's called SPYI or SPYI. This is from NEOS Investments and doesn't quite have the track record that the JP Morgan Premium Income has. However, SPYI has an impressive 12% yield and they paid their first dividend in February 2023 and continues to do so. That said, 12% seems a little high to me, so if you're looking for a fund that sells and sells covered calls, I'd say maybe don't put all your eggs in one basket. Covered calls are an effective way to generate income on stocks you already own, but they aren't 100% safe, as everyone says. There are still risks associated with, uh, with writing covered calls, and the sooner you know about them, the better your chances you will be of staying profitable. And remember, don't gamble on options trading. Always use screeners to, you know, to tip the balance of probabilities in your favor. Do you have any more questions about cover the risks of selling covered calls? What are your experiences with this strategy? Has it ever gone well for you or against you? And do you have anything else to add to this to the discussion? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, so leave a comment and let's keep that discussion going. So there you have it, the risks of selling covered calls or writing them and how to minimize them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like and share if you did, and don't forget to click on that subscribe button to avoid missing out on any new content that could potentially improve your trading experience. Until then, stay safe and stay smart. Bye.